Hey guys, stick around for 29 minutes, watch the entire video, and you will see every step of the process to build a Ford flathead. Every single piece, including the carburetor. There, got that done. All right, I've got the, uh, all the valves assembled here. I'm gonna continue the engine assembly process here. I'm gonna go through and start lapping all these valves. And we'll get on it. All right, so far I got the, I got the cam in. It's nice and tight in there, smooth. And then I've got the uh, oil idler gear here in the rear. I've already hammered in the pin here. That's a new idler gear there, and this is a new cam gear. They were too deteriorated. There was water that had gotten up in the block, and you can see a little bit of pitting right here on this pin. But these, I, these gears here were too far gone. They had too much pitting in it for me to feel good about. So I replaced those. Got the cam in now and keep on moving. All right, so next up on the list is to cover this up. You gotta put this cover on here. I got the gasket here for it. I'm gonna use sealant on both sides of this gasket because this is just a place you do not want a leak right here. Well, I'm gonna take a little bit of sealant here, just a little bit. And just coat this a tad. Like I said, I do not want to leak back here because that would get all over the clutch and the flywheel. It just would not be good. All right. I'm going to take a little bit of acetone here and clean up, make sure there's no oil on this gasket surface here. There's a little bit of paint residue on there where I painted the block the other day. Wanted to get it painted right after I washed it, dried it, and I didn't, I didn't, didn't want to let it sit long without being painted because didn't want it to form a bunch of rust. I got eight of the valves in. One half of the block is done with valves and lifters. I'm using adjustable lifters. It's pretty tedious to go through and get these lifters adjusted down far enough. Drop your lifter in the, the lifter board down there. Drop your valve in place here and then get the proper gap with a feeler gauge between the lifter and the foot of the valve. Of course, the cam has to be oriented correctly. So anyways, that's a pretty tedious process and that's what I'm going through right now. So that's just a quick little update. I'm using these bolts here to help me turn the cam when I orient it to the correct position to make sure that the lobe is it's on the heel, make sure the lifter is on the heel and not on the end of the, whatever that part's called that pushes it up. All right, I'll keep going, get these things in. Check back soon. Okay, here's what I've been doing. These lifters here, they're round of course, but they have flat edges where these indentations are. So they fit perfectly inside of this, this big wrench here without tightening it up. And then I have been tightening these down to where there's about one and a half or two threads showing on the adjustable lifter here.
And then I'm putting a little oil on it. This is not a final insert. I've still got stuff to do to it. I'm just getting the, just getting the gap right. And then what I've been doing, taking a drill with a 7 16 putting it on here and spinning the lifter. Making sure it spins nicely inside that bore. Because I want to be sure the lifters are free and able to spin when that cam is in there rotating. It kind of polishes the lifter and I don't know, it just makes me feel better. Gotta make sure the cam is oriented correctly. There it is. Okay, got the cam, got the cam right. Now, I'll take a valve, drop it in, and just see how my luck is, right? After I adjusted that lifter screw in. And I'm off. I gotta go in more. Now I do have these things that you can use. A couple different ways you could do this. You can drill each one of these lifter bores and then insert like a punch, something round and metal inside there to catch that lifter to stop it from spinning. And then you can put a little wrench on the this lifter screw, turn it in or out. These right here work okay if you're doing small adjustments. So what I like to do is get the screw as close as I can on the lifter, making adjustments outside of the block with my wrench and my socket, put it in there, get it as close as I can, and then use these to make the, the very minute adjustments. That's, that's what I prefer to do. I'm on my last lifter. Last lifter, last valve. I'm really, I'll be really happy to get this over with. I was hoping my method would get better and get a little easier as I went through, but the little Speedway tools, these little cheap spanners that they sell they're like 24 bucks a set i've broken this is my second set they keep breaking the tips keep breaking off i welded on a couple of them but then when you weld it on you got to do some grinding to get it right it takes forever to put the lifter in put the valve in put the horseshoe clip on get your clearance right take it back apart screw in the lifter get your clearance again it just it's just it's a tedious process So I'm continuing to do a, how I started. I'm just getting it as close as I can. Drop the lifter down this bore here. Finally got all the lifters and valves in, got all the lifter, lifters adjusted. Um, tedious process, not an enjoyable thing for sure, but I'm happy that it's over. Um, I feel good about it. I got them all adjusted right where I want them. So I feel good about it. It's late tonight. I got to work tomorrow early. So after work, I'll be back out here in the garage uh, getting some more stuff checked off the list. Till then, see ya. A new day. Just got out in the garage, just got off work. Putting in some main bearings. I got the rear main seals done already. I got the rope seals in the bottom of the oil pan and in the back of the block here. I just snapped in the front two main bearings, so that's what I'm going to do today. Hopefully, get this crank in here soon and then um, just keep going. These are new old stock standard Ford rear mains. All right, I'm getting ready to drop in the crankshaft. Um, I got the bearings in, and then I got the main caps. Got the bearings in both sides. I'm gonna throw some uh, assembly lube on here. Drop in the crank, 
put the caps on and then torque the main caps to 85 foot pounds and I'll do it in stages from 40 to 60 to 85. Also put a little bit of lube on the rope seal. And these clearances, they were already, clearances were already checked. I've already gotten the sludge plugs installed as well into the crankshaft. cleaned it really well, but I want to wipe it off. I've had it sitting here, but it's been covered in plastic for a few days. Got the crankshaft installed. It turns nice and smooth. Now I got to get the pistons and rings and rods assembled. All right, just getting ready to install the pistons on the rods with the wrist pins. Got the new wrist pin clips here, and then I got my Hastings rings. put the pistons on the rods themselves now. Got all the rings done for all eight of the pistons. Got the rods and caps cleaned up. Got the bearings ready to put in. Got the clips here. I'm gonna put some rods on. Got all the pistons built here, piston assemblies. Here's the rod caps. Got the block flipped back over here. It takes a little bit of figuring for me, you know, to figure the dot goes forward, right, on the pistons always. But which way the number on the cap and the rod itself, because they're different, one through four and then five through eight, which is something I just have to think about and kind of flip the block back and forth to make sure I've got it right, so. Anyways. It's getting late. I think I'm going to wrap it up. Eventually we'll have this thing running. We're getting there. We've got the pistons assembled. This thing has come a long way. This thing was a dilapidated block. It's set in a 51 Ford F1 in the middle of a field for years with no hood on the truck. So this thing was exposed to the elements. The choke was open on the carburetor. It had no, um, no oil bath on it. I've got an oil bath up here for it. But it had no oil bath on it when I got it. And um, it was exposed to the elements for years. So... Anyways, I'll put some pictures in here to remind you guys what it looked like. And if you want to look back at some of the earlier episodes, you can see as well what, what it looked like when I pulled it and brought it home. Here's something to consider. I had mentioned a few times, I'm not sure if I've edited it out, but these uh, piston bores are in rough shape. You can tell it's got a nice hone to it. I, I have honed these, but I'm not doing any machine work. This thing did not leave my garage except whenever I took it to the car wash and pressure washed it. But, and I also sandblasted it. I actually sandblasted this block right here. So um, it was filthy and it was absolutely rusty. You can see all the rust pitting right here in the, in the surface right here where the uh, intake manifold goes. But it was bad. It was as bad as it can be. I had to, if you remember and look back at some of the earlier episodes, I had to weld a rod to the valves, put a slide hammer on. You know, there were a few comments on how I could have done it and should have done it. And I'm telling you, if you were here, you would see that it wouldn't work. The only option I had was to get in here and cut these things out. But then how do you beat them out? They were rusted in there. Um, the best leverage angle that I had was to weld to it. 
take a slide hammer and knock these things out. That's exactly what I did. And then I took a punch and drove the valve guide into the block and guided it out that way. So anyway, it's got the entire valve tra train of uh, brand new springs, guides, valves, horseshoe clips. All those are brand new. Last night, if you watched earlier, I've got all the adjustments done. I'm not gonna mention what I put the, the gap at between the valve and the head of the lifter here because controversy over that. I, I use what I wanna use and that's it. So when I took this thing apart, I was showing some of the, the cylinders earlier. Like I mentioned, the hone's good, but this thing has some gouges. They're not deep, but I can feel that that gouge right there. I'm not sure if a ring broke away right here. I don't think so. I think this is actually weather. I think it rusted a little bit here. This is definitely rust here. It was pitted up pretty bad in here. And you can see in here, it does have a ring ridge. Yes, I know it needs board, but I am not boring it. I'm, I, the whole reason for building this engine is to not do anything to it other than clean it the best I can in my garage and not take it to a machine shop. It does have new bearings and all like that because that didn't make sense. I had bearings already, so new valves I had to because the valves I had to destroy them to get them out, but I'm reusing the cam bearings that are in it. Um, all the other bearings are new. Rods and mains are all new, but the it will not be bored. Um, also, the crankshaft was not turned. The crank's got a little bit of coloration to the journals it's not pitted it's not in bad shape but it does have some striation and some coloration to it it, it needs to be turned you can kind of see one of the journals down in there it's not too bad but it's not a freshly turned crank let's just say that so tomorrow what i'll do um looking at my list here i've got to put the pistons in one thing I had to do when I disassembled this thing, I had to beat the pistons out with a sledgehammer. So I've got the uh, video on that as well. Um, it was previously posted in, in, in some of the earlier episodes. But I'll get the gears on tomorrow, the, the timing gear here for the cam, and I'll get the uh, the front dis distributor cover, or timing gear cover on, maybe even get to the water pumps tomorrow after we get all the pistons in and we'll get the rods torqued, so. All right, onward to tomorrow. All right, it's a new day, just got in from work. I'm gonna start back on the flathead block here. I got the pistons and rods, rod caps, everything assembled, ready to go here. I'm gonna start putting these pistons down in these bores. I got the cylinders cleaned up really well and got them oiled, got the cylinder walls covered in oil really well, get ready for these pistons to go in and we'll uh, keep going get at it and uh, hopefully we'll be able to get uh, the cam gear on the front get the cam locking plate put on um get a few other things done on the checklist today piston here, sending the last rod through right now, number eight. I like to do it sideways like this. Watching the bearing on the journal there. Got 
gotta watch and make sure your bearing do doesn't snap out of the rod also. Looks good. Now I'll get the cap. Now I've got the cap here and I'll apply some lube to the bearing surface. I've already got it on the, I've already got some assembly lube on the um, journals also, but I, I like to put it on the bearing surface as well. Just push that on. I'll start the nuts. I know you shouldn't have to, they, but I like to use um, red Loctite on these rod nuts because I don't want to think of a rod nut ever coming off. That's about as catastrophic as it could be. I just use a little drip. Just a little bit. Let it run down the thread. Then I'll just run the nuts on snug. And then the spec is torqued to 50 pounds. And that's it. Now let's take our first look at it with the pistons in it. torqued on the crank main caps the torque rod the rod bolts are torqued <clears throat> i got the fuel pump installed torqued wired screens torqued now i have put down a layer of some uh, mega black sealant then put the gasket down got the bolt holes aligned and now i'm dropping the oil pan on i also put a little bit of a, a thin layer of sealant around the edge of the oil pan Looks pretty good. Looks like it lined up pretty good. Got the one piece front seal. Instead of using the rope, it does have the rope seal in the rear though. I'm just hoping that that's the right rope seal in the rear. A lot of people leave this uh, little thing here off. Goes on here. I even bought all new 
these are new old stock rubber pieces here. Here's a little half moon looking piece that inserts here. I got a guy that has these that sells them. Also, pieces here. This piece snaps around right here. Helps seal the flywheel area, the bell housing. Thank you.